we've done fighters we've done protectors and now we're on to casters and this video is going to be what thing you should be upgrading first whether it be an ability or an equipment we're going to go through all the casters to make sure you know what to spend your coins on for each of the individual casters if this is helpful and you want to see more like it subscribe i'd appreciate it and as always you look pretty fantastic out there I also want to mention that I have not leveled all the characters yet, but I do have enough information for this game to give you a pretty good educated opinion on what you should be upgrading. Starting off first, we have Anduin, and I think the obvious thing to upgrade here is Holy Nova. It's just such a good ability, and especially when it's paired with Velen, it could do absolutely wonders. If you don't have Velen, it might be worth actually upgrading Penance, but generally speaking, I think Holy Nova is the best one. Now, when it comes to equipment for Anduin, it's really hard because the robes are actually quite, not sorry, Starting off with Anduin Rin, it's pretty toss up between what ability you should level. Now, I want to say Holy Nova is the best one, but it's only really good when you have Velen. It's a really good ability for PvE, so I'd still recommend it. But Penance is also not a bad second option if you just feel like you need more single targets. But when it comes down to equipments, I do think the Ring of Purity is actually really, really good. But if you're going for just straight damage, the Harmonic Mallet is probably what you want to go. Making Holy Nova do more damage and it's doubled by Velen is extremely strong. So I'd probably go for the Mallet. Next is Antonitis. Now, generally speaking, a lot of his upgrades aren't inherently that great because upgrading Fireball just increases the damage. Upgrading Flame Strike just increases the damage. And then same thing for Fireball Storm. Now, I feel like it's just the safe option to go for Fireball. It's probably going to be the thing you use the most. Fireball Storm could be very good in a fire composition, so that's also something to consider. When we think about the equipment, Center Core Staff is just good. It makes Fireballs do more damage, and I think that's really good. I could see the Pendant doing a lot as well. Uh, it's just you don't have to upgrade it as well, so or at all. So, you know, Antonitis is fine, but probably Fireball for the most part. Serengeddon is up next, and same thing kind of goes for Antonitis here. A lot of his abilities are pretty synergistic with a fire composition, but just in a vacuum, I think heating up is just straight up his best ability. You just make everything cost faster for fire spells, and that seems to be the best thing. Uh, just Upgrading his abilities just makes everything damage more, so you'll probably be using heating up the most, so I think this is the most appropriate. You could make the case for Living Bomb, though. I think it actually does quite a lot of damage, so you can also upgrade that as well. For equipment, uh, you don't have to really consider a lot here. The Mask uh, or the Mark of Conflagration, what a weird equipment, by the way. Uh, deals more damage, which is definitely fine if you want to max Inferno. Multiplate, I think, is just the easy one because it makes his most accessible and probably the ability you're going to use the most on get in just deal more damage burning bracers would also be good but again you don't actually have to level this one up so i would probably go for heating up or living bomb and then molten blade for your upgrades when it comes to blink fox it's very interesting as well it seems like a lot of the casters have a lot of like if ifs and ands uh but for blink fox just in a vacuum i think arcing fling is probably your go-to it's the one that's the most consistent because mind thief is kind of reliant on you you know hitting the right ability and Mana Blank, again, is not bad, but your upgrading only makes it faster, and it's already a two cooldown, so you're not going to use this as frequently. I think Arcane Fling is just the safe one, and I think it goes without saying Arcane Fang is probably just to make your thing do more damage. Now, you could make the case for upgrading Mana Runes, but I don't actually know if you could. If you upgrade this, again, you're just making this ability faster, and I don't know if that's actually that good. But Arcane Fling and Arcane Fang seem good for Blink Fox. Right Wing is very dependent on the composition that you are running or just in general. It's really hard to just say this ability is the best for Bright Wing because it depends on what you want. I think generally speaking, Fairy Breath is probably the safest one to upgrade because, you know, you're just going to deal damage and upgrade your guys. And that's very, very nice. It makes their guys even stronger on the board. But you can also make the case for Phase Shift because, you know, swapping health on Bright Wing and swapping out another minion could be great. But I don't think the health on Brightwing generally matters, so Phase Shift is not really my go-to. Pictus is also really good. Just making some good healing is great, but I think it's quite literally just always going to be Fairy Breath, and then I would probably upgrade Brightwing's Netflix just to make Fairy Breath good. I don't know. It's so hard for these last couple three because they're so situational, but there's Brightwing. So we have Brucon. Now, Brucon is super good in a nature composition, and I think it's quite literally just obvious. Lightning Bolt is probably your go-to. You could also make the case for Chain Lightning because once you get Lightning Rod, it becomes that much better. You just got to make sure you don't send Brucon out first. But yeah, uh, Chain Lightning is great. But I think generally speaking, Lightning Bolt, again, it's the one you're going to use the most. It's the most common. It sets up a lot of abilities. But you could also make the case for Chain Lightning. And if you get Crackling Band, I would highly recommend getting it. But, you know, I haven't done Task 7 because there's too many to do. Buff Rune Totem, our nature big boy bear thing. I don't know what the hell he is. 
but uh, it's very easy to look at his abilities and see what not to upgrade. And I promise you with not runic slam because death blows are not inherently great. I think living brambles is the best one to upgrade. And then of course, just upgrading Bramblethorn totem is probably just the best one. So you do have a higher damage output. Guff's pretty easy. Uh, Iron Bark, pretty good ability, but I don't think it's better than Living Brambles. Well, Gul'dan, it's pretty easy in my opinion. I think Siphon Soul is his best ability by far, and it's not even close because not only does it restore health to him, but it restores health to all orcs and demons, which is insane. And then of course for equipment, the Amulet of Souls is just so good because it makes that ability do more damage, which means in return, you're getting more healing. So for Jaina Proudmoore, it's really hard to tell because I don't think Jaina is that great of her abilities. The problem is, is like, you're never gonna get it frozen. Uh, so Ice Flows is just strictly better than Icicle because Frozen Tish takes too long. Water Elemental is definitely not bad, but again, I think generally speaking, if you wanna run Jaina, this is gonna be your go-to ability. So I would probably upgrade this the most. And then when it comes down to equipment, I don't really think any of her equipment is that great. I think obviously Icicle is fine to upgrade, and I think getting the equipment is good if you have to upgrade any of them. But I think generally speaking, you just want Ice Block. It's just too good. It would potentially just give you a whole other turn, which can be rather insane. For Millhouse Mana Storm, the easy upgrade, in my opinion, is Arcane Bolt. It not only doubles the damage, but gives you oh my double the damage, basically doubling the damage and gives you more arcane damage. But it's just his best ability by far. And then for equipment, I would do Arcane Powder. Uh, you're going to probably go Arcane Bolt into Arcane Explosion generally as his pattern. You might sometimes want to use Greater Arcane Missiles. And if you do want to use that, then maybe the Wand is good enough, but you don't really need to upgrade that. So I would just upgrade the Arcane Powder to make Arcane Explosion just slightly better and deal more damage. Oracle, the Oracle is definitely an interesting as well. I don't really like the middle ability here because it's very dependent on you having Murlocs. So I would recommend you go for Murloc Missiles or healing wave now if you're going to be using him as more of a healing bot then definitely upgrading this first but i think murloc missiles is great and for equipment um this is such a good equipment that you basically want this on morgul so you don't have to fit him right into a murloc composition but again it's task seven so what do you want to upgrade fishy barrage again it's not super great so i'm going for the dowsing rod just for more healing but yeah i'd probably these two are the what you want for morgul natalie selene it's a toss-up for me i do think shadow beam is probably their go-to ability but I do actually thinking that the third ability is really good to upgrade as well and getting the wonderful splinter of Nord Razil, I think, I don't know. The reason for this is because if you can play this turn one and follow it with Shadow Beam after, it's much better than going like Shadow Beam, then this, then Shadow Beam. So I would highly recommend upgrading this one, then this one and getting this task because that's probably gonna be your go-to abilities for Natalie Selene. Prophet Velen, now Prophet on his own is not inherently great. He really needs to have some holy synergistic aspects in your comp. But if I had to pick one ability to upgrade, it is gonna be Velen's Blessing because when you set that up with Anduin, it's game winning on its own. It's so good because the cooldown can go max at two four which means guaranteed always it's going to go to Velen into Anduin for Holy Nova combinations. Now, if you don't have Anduin, you're probably going to upgrade either Holy Blast or Splitting Light. Splitting Light is definitely a pretty good upgrade because it's a basically an AoE ability as long as you have Holy. So if you have another Holy character, Splitting Light's great, but then Holy Blast is your go-to. For his actual equipment, there is a lot of chances where Bl Blessed Shard will be the really like good equipment to put on him. But you could also make the case for Potion of Light if you need that extra healing because you might get focused in your team comp. I don't know. It's so hard for Velen because he's such a utility-based character. But I think, generally speaking, Velen's Blessing has been my go-to ability that I want to upgrade. And then probably Blessed Shard to make Splitting Light do more damage. Thames and Rome, I think it's pretty easy. Shadow Bolt is definitely the one you want to go for. The, that being said, Veil of Shadows is really good because when you upgrade it, the speed goes down, I think, all the way down to one or two, which is very good in a shadow composition because making sure your enemies can heal and then stacking damage on that with someone like Vol'jin perhaps can be rather devastating. So definitely a contender for the upgrading. Now, when it comes to their equipment, Last Rites is pretty good. Summoning a Taunty Boy is really strong, especially if they focus Temzin. So I like that a lot. If not, Shadow Room can do just as well and upgrade it. So your just basic Shadow Bolt does more damage. Uther is one of my favorite mercenaries in the game right now. And when it comes to just upgrading an ability, it's probably easily Hammer of Justice. You can make the case for Avenging Wrath or Blessing of Protection, depending on what role Uther is in your comp. But on average, you're going to be using Hammer of Justice the most. So I'd highly recommend upgrading this. Now, when it comes to his equipment, it's definitely the case of what your his role is in the team comp because sometimes gleaming paladrons is really good with avenging wrath if you have the holy setup Lightbringer is obviously good because it just makes you know them slow down more and that could be a big deal but also lira sacrifice is 
really good because giving divine shield to other mercenaries is great but i don't think you can actually upgrade this one so i'm gonna go with lightbringer and hammer of justice on average Jordan dawn grasp is a pretty good mercenary just because of the fact that flurry is kind of low-key busted and the reason that is is just because you get spammed every turn permanently slow the enemy mercenaries down and then of course just the easy equipment is just potion of loot ice sorry not i was gonna say potion of illusion but that's a standard hearthstone card I, their other abilities are not good so don't use them uh, it's just flurry you're spamming this every single time full Jin. now i had not level Vol'jin yet and i still can't believe i haven't because Vol'jin is one of the best characters in the game by far now when it comes to his equipment because i think it's easier you just want the ring of haste making your shadow abilities faster is so freaking strong and the more you upgrade it the faster he gets static seahorse is definitely okay and glaive of Vol'jin is also fine but just making your abilities faster is so freaking strong now when it comes to his actual abilities Shadow Shock is definitely the one you probably want to go for first, but I can make a case for Curse of Weakness because it is a shadow weakness that also brings AoE, which is insanely strong in PvE runs and PvP. But I think generally speaking, you're going to go for Shadow Shock. Curse of Weakness is probably going to follow that up. Last but not least, and I'm sure most people have done this already, and if you have not, shame on you because I don't know what you were doing. But Blinding Luminance is the go-to. Upgrade this immediately. It's not even close this is her, her best ability by far and then you have radiant wand to just be the go-to equipment very easy that's casters hope you enjoyed